In a world where spirits are more than just a nightmare, Maul, an extremely powerful boy, tries to balance his job as an exorcist with his school life. Will he be able to pull it off, or will he succumb to the pressure? Let's find out. The movie starts with Arataka Reijin accepting Hanako's request to exorcise a spirit. He shows her his prices and informs her that it is extremely difficult to completely remove a spirit. Sounds like a fraud to me. Hanako's boyfriend, Taro, suspects that Arataka is a fraud and doesn't believe that he is a real psychic, but Hanako believes him. Outside Hanako's place, Arataka points to the wrong house, but Taro quickly calls him out for being a fraud again, even though his smile looks fake. Shortly after, a spirit arrives, which surprises everyone, and Arataka tries to exorcise the spirit using normal store salt, but it has no effect on the being. Seriously, bro! With no other option left, Arataka decided to call his student, Mob, who comes in with a powerful aura around him, and he defeats the spirit with ease. Now that's power. Unlike the fraud, Arataka, Mob actually possesses psychic abilities, and they look so cool. Afterward, Arataka pays him, and Mob wonders why his teacher called him for such a weak spirit, but Arataka states that Mob is a powerful psychic who melts everything, and now that explains why he is single. Arataka warns him that his powers are too great, and it might end up destroying him if he doesn't manage to control it, as it turns, he is already 22% close to an explosion. Later that day, Mob has dinner with his family. Wonder if any of them are psychic, too. It, probably not, though. Mob, being Mob, ends a spoon unconsciously, and his mother warns him that she will replace the spoons with his allowance if he keeps bending them. Never thought I would hear such a punishment. But then, how do you punish a psychic? The following morning, on his way to school, Mob sees Tsubomi Takane, a girl he likes, but all his powers don't even get him a girl. I probably have no hope then. During class, Mob does badly in math and physical class. Can't say I blame him. After school, Arataka calls him to the station for a big job. Can't wait to see the powerful spirit. They head to the Honedo Tunnel, located along Tri Highways. Although the tunnel has been sealed away, people keep disappearing, and Arataka believes the hatred of the biker gang who died in the tunnel is responsible for the disappearances. Bet you can't say that with a straight face, can you? They soon arrive at the tunnel, and Arataka bravely enters, but quickly runs back out, scared, wondering why Mob is not entering with him. Mob reveals that he thought Arataka had everything under control. They are probably going to tear his face off. Mob also adds that Arataka is very brave, as they are surrounded by spirits, but Arataka tells him to focus on the weak ones. Mob starts destroying the spirits, while Arataka walks like he owns the place. Can't wait to watch him get smacked by a spirit. He runs into a big spirit and mistakes the monster for a wrestler. He explains that he slipped on a banana peel and crashed, which resulted in his gang crashing and dying too. So, at the end of the day, they got defeated by a banana. Boss claims that the tunnel belongs to him as he is about to kill Arataka, but Mob protects him with his force field, which makes Arataka brag about how cool he is. Arataka then decides to finish him up with salt in his fist, but surprise! Surprise! It doesn't work, prompting Mob to step on, and he defeats the boss, melting him to a degraded form. He begs them to stop, revealing that there is a spirit down the tunnel who is a hundred years old, and states that he is responsible for the killing. Knowing the boss here couldn't defeat a peel to save his life, Arataka doesn't believe him, but Mob reveals that the mysterious aura hasn't disappeared yet, and decides to check it out. Mob faces a bigger and stronger spirit who eats him with ease. Yes, you can say he was overwhelmed by his problems. However, Mob uses his psychic powers and melts the beast from the inside. He destroys the spirit like the boss that he is, and reveals that the spirit is not so powerful, just boss things. He then gives the bike leader a picture of his gang, which causes him to cry. And he passes on peacefully. It's gonna be a conversation on heaven regarding how he died, though. On their way home, Mob asks Arataka why he didn't help out in the tunnel, which surprises Arataka. However, he regains his composure and states that he was leaving the weak spirits to Ma. Oh, he is good. The next morning, Arataka informs a customer that he has a digital curse from a porn site that cursed his shoulder and makes him keep clicking while spending lots of money. Well, that curse is not too bad. Arataka starts performing a massage and the client feels much better, although he refuses to pay for the exorcism at first as he is clearly enjoying 
enjoying the curse. Who wouldn't? And decides to return later. Meanwhile, while they have lunch, Mob starts a conversation with Arataka, which surprises him, and he starts to panic, thinking Mob has figured him out. Well, it's about time. Mob wonders if it is okay to keep lying to people, but decides not to stop because he has nothing else to do, and Arataka tells him to go to a club, a school club. What were you thinking? Elsewhere, the telepathy club loses a member, prompting the arrival of Ikaru Tokugawa, who tells them that they need to have five members by Friday, or he will be forced to disband the club and allocate their space to a different club. I bet he's going to enjoy it. Tome and the rest of the club members start looking for a new member, but everyone turns them down, stating that their club is creepy. Emotional damage, with no other option left, Mamita Unakawa remembers that Mob is not in a club, and Tome tries to convince him to join their club. However, Mob refuses, stating that he has to work after school, but Tome refuses to back down. Mob then calls Eritaka and informs him that he will be late as he tries to explain that he has to work at school. Eritaka ends up getting into an argument with Tome for trying to steal Mob away from him, and he believes they are shady. Although Mob feels bad about the telepathy club being cancelled, Eritaka manages to convince Mob not to join the club after revealing that they are just using him. Look in the mirror, pal. You might see a liar too. Running out of options, Mamita tries to blackmail him emotionally. He states that he just wants to goof off and he doesn't want to lose the paradise that they have created. I don't see it though. Tome reveals that Mob is their last hope and he agrees to think about it, giving them his answer the next day. After school, Eritaka and Mob head over to the High Soul Private Girls Academy dressed as girls. And I am not going to lie, Eritaka is killing with the wig. At the gate, the guards don't allow Eritaka to enter, calling him a pervert after deducing that he is a man. I guess he couldn't pull off that wig. However, the guard doesn't realize that Mob is a boy and allows him into the house. Mob then proceeds to the roof where he meets the clients who explain that the various supernatural phenomena has occurred recently and they need to look for the spirit involved. Sounds like a good first date. He manages to trap the monster in the basketball hall, but this only makes the monster mad and he reveals himself. He attempts to take a hostage after underestimating Mob's powers, but Mob defeats him with ease. Wasn't expecting anything less from our girl. Uh, sorry, boy. Before passing on, the spirit explains Mob is just like him and states that he was not able to have fun in the afterlife before disappearing. He asks Mob if he is living a fulfilled life, and this question startles him. Later that night, Mob thinks about his life and decides to join the telepathy club. However, just as he is about to sign the form, Hikaru arrives to show the Body Improvement Club their new room. Seeing that, Mob is interested in joining. He questions him and tries to convince him not to join. He definitely hates the club. After thinking it over, Mob realizes he wants to confess to Sobomi and improve himself. He decides to join the Body Improvement Club, which surprises the Telepathy Club members. Mob did them dirty. Realizing that being psychic doesn't get the girl, well, even magical powers don't impress girls, Mob starts training with the Body Improvement Club, but soon collapses because his bones are made of jelly. Meanwhile, the Telepathy Club gets to keep the room as the Body Improvement Club, wow, that's a mouthful, only needs it to store their equipment. Musashi brings in the collapsed Mob and asks the club to look after him. Shortly after, Mob regains consciousness, and Tome wonders why he joins such a demanding club. Mob explains that he joined the club because he wants to improve himself, but Tome sees through him and realizes that he is just trying to be popular. She tells him he will never be popular and doesn't believe that he has psychic powers, causing him to demonstrate his power, and an excited Tome asks him to help her out in looking for extraterrestrial life forms. However, Mob refuses, stating that he has other things to do. Oh, that has got to hurt. Afterward, Mob goes to Arataka, who deduces that Mob is having girl trouble and tells him that his goal is understandable as he is also trying to be popular with the money, I guess. On his way home, Mob encounters a woman who figures out that he is sad because of love. She tells him that he can become popular if he goes with her, a creepy stranger asking you to follow. What could possibly go wrong? Mob agrees to go with her, and they arrive at a secret religious meeting of LOL. He is brought to the stage where he spots his classmate, Ichi. Not long after, the cult leader, Dimple, <laughs> what kind of 
a cult name is Dimple, shows up and starts making everyone laugh. He places a mask on Mob and another man as he wants to initiate them. However, Ichi refuses to be initiated as she believes the religion is suspicious and states that he is from the middle school newspaper. She believes that Dimple is brainwashing people, but she becomes confused after the man starts laughing after he has the mask removed. Laughing gas, perhaps? I mean, what do I know? She tries to leave, but Dimple won't allow her, and he puts a mask on her, causing her to laugh. Meanwhile, Mob is not affected by the mask and requests to leave. Dimple tries to convince him to stay, but ends up challenging him to a milk drinking contest with the LOL leader. Yeah, this is getting weird. And whoever laughs first loses due to his love of milk. Mob accepts the challenge and easily defeats all three leaders. Enraged, Dimple challenges Mob and puts something in the milk, making him spit it out. Dimple then claims he laughed, but this makes Mob angry and releases powerful energy, releasing everyone from hypnosis. But Dimple quickly reapplies it. Dimple then tries to defeat Mob using his psychic powers, but it has no effect on Mob, as he states that he can't laugh even if he wanted to. Dimple mocks him that he has no emotions and he will not be able to laugh with the person he loves. Therefore, he will be alone. Dimple decides to destroy Mob and commands his people to stop Mob, but he releases his rage, incapacitating them all. He defeats Dimple with ease and saves his followers. Now that's our. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If this video is the most popular of our latest collection of recaps, we will make a part two. Let us know what series you want us to recap next in the comments below.